Hey, it's Mike from The Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to The Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to themikewagnershow at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And they'll distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful lady from Florida who's currently in Tennessee right now doing some um, a, a very special project we'll tell you about in just a minute. And she and quite a few of her sisters are hosts of Soul Sisters Paranormal. You can uh, check out the website at soulsistersparanormal.com. they got some videos out. And if you're wondering, it's going to be a TV show. They'll be um, talking to you about that. And these sisters have traveled throughout the U.S. in search of paranormal and we'll be talking about uh, where's their favorite places, the best stories, and how long they've been doing it. I mean, this is just a fantastic story for those who really get into paranormal. I mean, just a lot of great stories and where they are. So live, ladies and gentlemen, from somewhere in Tennessee. And these guys aren't afraid of ghosts. So if you're thinking of Ghostbusters, well, I think you're in the wrong state of mind. Live, ladies and gentlemen, one of the sisters from Soul Sisters Paranormal, Christy Sumner. Christy, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me today. Well, it's great to have you as well, too. So you're one of the hosts of Soul Sisters Paranova. you got some videos out on YouTube, and um, it, it looks like you guys ought to have a TV show. We'll talk more about that. You guys have all traveled throughout the U.S. in search of Paranova. You've been in places like North Carolina, Philadelphia, Tennessee, Florida, Iowa, West Virginia, and Virginia, and pretty much just about throughout the whole United States, and we'll share some of the stories. And before we get into all that, uh, tell you guys, how, tell you, how'd you guys get all started? Well, it's, it's interesting. We actually started as a girls' weekend. Um, as you mentioned, it's a couple of my sisters, my twin sister and my younger sister and I, along with two family friends, and we were looking for something unique to do uh, as, a, as a girls' weekend because we all live in different parts of the country. So we started our first investigation um, in 2014, and we started with Moundsville Penitentiary in West Virginia. And the reason we started there was because that is where our mother's from um, originally. So we have some family friends there, and, and one of them sits on the board of Moundsville Penitentiary. So we said, why don't you all go up and stay the night and you know see if you like paranormal investigations? So we did that. We had a, a couple of night vision cameras. We had a couple of voice recorders. And uh, we did that investigation, spent the night in the prison, and absolutely just fell in love with paranormal investigations. Some of the stuff that we found there just really solidified our, uh, our belief in the paranormal. We caught things as footsteps, doors slamming. Um, we had some voices that we caught on our voice recorders. So after that investigation, we really wanted to formalize our group. So we decided on Soul Sisters Paranormal as the name. 
and uh, just really started going across the country and doing some of these very cool adventures. It, it sounds like a really good adventure as well, too. And um, how, how much paranormal did you get involved with before going on this uh, on this trip to West Virginia? Well, we'd always watched, you know, uh, some of the paranormal shows that were on TV, like Ghost Hunters and, and uh, Ghost Adventures and such. And we would say to ourselves, you know, why didn't they ask these questions or why didn't they set up cameras here or I wish they would have stayed longer in this location and uh, so we we really kind of modeled our investigation style after some of those shows in the respect that you know we really wanted to highlight that paranormal um, experience we wanted to allow our um, our fans and our audience to really kind of immerse themselves in the investigation with us but first and foremost was the historical aspect. You know, we, we all um, have advanced degrees, so research and, and knowledge and that knowledge base is very important to us. So when we go to these locations, the, the paranormal is, is kind of in lockstep with the historical aspect. So we really want to highlight what the history of the location is and then do the paranormal investigation based around that history and, and based around what we find on our research. So we've really tried to, when we go to, like I said, when we go to the investigations, we really uh, immerse ourselves in that. But it was really kind of started by just um, an intense wondering, if you will, of, of what a paranormal investigation really entailed. And so once we started doing it, we got our, our model, which we really like, um, our investigation style, our research style, and that's really what we do when we go on these investigations. And what were some of the questions that you had in mind before doing paranormal research? Re- re- research, and it was a thing you watched. It's like, what are some of the questions that really intrigued you before going on a paranormal uh, search? Well, a lot of uh, basically, um, you know, why why do we think that paranormal activity exists? Why? Um, you know, why are some of these places considered hot spots while others aren't? Um, you know, uh, essentially looking and delving into that aspect of it. Um, and again, all of those questions are really guided by the location as well. You know, some of the questions that we have with regard to a place like Fort Mifflin in Philadelphia are a little bit different than a place like Ma Barker in Central Florida or the Ma Barker House. So the the historical aspect really leads and guides our questions with regard to our investigations for sure. Mm -hmm. And how do you choose your investigation locations? Um, A lot of times it has to do with our schedule. Um, Like I said, we're all in different locations, so it has to fit with our schedule. That's first and foremost. And then um, the what we call the larger, I would say, commercial investigations, those places like Fort Mifflin or um, a Brushy Mountain uh, State Penitentiary in, in Tennessee, um, they're really to build our portfolio because these are considered hotspots. So we really kind of want to go in and delve a little bit more into the history um, and then try to validate uh, kind of what other paranormal investigators have found um, or come up with answers that maybe others haven't. So that really kind of drives some of the locations that we go to. Other times when we do private residential um, we've been asked by clients to come in and, and do an investigation. And uh, other, there are other places that are smaller um, that we actually just ask the owners, you know, we're intrigued by this location. Can we come in and do an investigation? So it, it's really, uh, you know, we have three different um, um, avenues to investigate, if you will. There's larger commercial ones, um, private residential, and then those that we seek out on our own. Mm-hmm. And we'll also get into the specifics and uh, where you have visited the paranormal. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here at Christy Sumner from SoulSistersParanormal.com. As a special guest on the Mike Wagner Show, she is one of a few sisters who are in this um, 
Paranormal, and they got their own company, and they visited uh, quite a number of places in North Carolina, Philadelphia, Tennessee, Florida, and the like. And let's start off with Hickory, North Carolina, Henry River Mill Village, and tell us all about that experience. Well, that was a fascinating location. Um, for those of you who don't know, it was the site of uh, filming of the Hunger Games. It was District 12 in the Hunger Games. And it used to be a, uh, a textile mill. Um, and so back in the early 1900s, these mills would pop up across, uh, across the country. And in order to really um, mobilize the workforce, they would build villages around their mills. So they would house the, the mill workers, so they'd essentially be there on site. And so the mill ran for, for decades. And eventually, um, in the end of the, of the early 1970s, um, uh, the mill started to decline a little bit. Textiles started uh, to be manufactured overseas. So the mill started to decline a little bit. And um, uh, in, the, in the late uh, 1970s, the mill actually burned down. So a lot of those families vacated the village. So, but what remains are these fascinating homes. Um, there were 32 to start. I think there's about 24, 23 or 24 that actually remain, and as well as the general store. And it's essentially a, an abandoned village. Um, it does have a private owner at the, at the moment, but uh, we went in there, and it was actually our first investigation where we collaborated with another team, and that was uh, Ghost Biker Explorations. So we collaborated on that one, and so we went in and set up some night vision video cameras, some voice recorders in some of the houses that still remain, and we did some different experiments in, uh, in those houses as well as the general store. And what we came away with was some very fascinating paranormal activity, both what we call uh, residual, which we describe as kind of like a blip in time, as well as um, what we call intelligence, where they're actually the spirits are actually communicating or responding with us based on various experiments that we do. So we had quite a, a few what we call EVPs, which is electronic voice phenomena, and uh, that occurs when we go back and listen to our voice recorders and we capture a sound or a voice that we didn't hear in the moment. So um, it was a fascinating investigation for us, and we actually went back a couple of times um, to do some speaking engagements there. Uh, so Henry Ramo Village is a, is, a, is a great location. Um, just in the historical aspect, but as well as the paranormal activity as well. From all the information you've gathered, what was some of the um, activity that was going on, you know, in the paranormal? Uh, okay, so for example, when we went up into the general store, um, it's a two-story structure, a, a brick building, if you will, two stories, as well as a basement. And um, the first experiment, one of the, the interesting experiments that we did down in the basement is we had several flashlights set up, and um, we were asking entities to turn on and off the flashlights. Um, and, and we actually got a very good session if, with that, which is interesting to us. And then we had names being spoken. We had um, uh, some interesting things. We have what we call a spirit box, which, if your your audience doesn't know, it's a essentially an AM-FM radio that has been configured to sweep very quickly through AM, FM frequencies. So when you turn it on, essentially what you're going to hear is just static, like static across those airwaves. And so the thought is that a spirit can use that to speak to us, to those paranormal investigators. Um, so what you hear are words coming through that static, essentially. And so we're doing things like holding up a playing card and asking what the number was. Um, so, for example, I held up the six of spades, and we got the number six through the spirit box. Um, there was a gentleman on site there who was, uh, who had to be there for, he was a security guard. Um, and he was there with us that night, but he was sitting over in his car and he actually happens to be a law enforcement official. So when I said the name Adam over the spirit box came the word police. So huh. that was very interesting. And then, um, you know, when we left, our, we do a lot of what we call stationary equipment. Um, so we leave voice recorders and, uh, and, and night vision video cameras in locations where we're not necessarily there for all time. So, um, like, we had all of the houses, we had a night vision video camera and a voice recorder in there, and we just left them running through the night. And one of the voice recorders that we had in what would have been a kitchen area um, of one of the houses caught some, some male voices. Again, there were only females, and that one guy, Adam, but he sat in his car. So we caught, captured some male voices, um, one of which saying, that's a lot of food, which was interesting because the voice recorder was in the kitchen area. Wow. And we had another, 
we had another voice saying, hi, my name is Billy. Um, we had another voice saying, get out. And uh, so, yeah, to us, it was, it was a very interesting evening with regard to paranormal activity. It sounds interesting. I was going to ask you about uh, what were they saying as well, too, but I think you covered that. And um, well, mm-hmm. at, and um, you also talked about the um, Fort Mifflin in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And um, mm-hmm. I'd like to hear more about that one, Fort Mifflin. Sure, absolutely. Fort Mifflin was absolutely fascinating to us. And if, if you've never been, I do encourage you to go. Um, just for the historical aspect, uh, aside from the paranormal activity, but the historical aspect is just phenomenal. It, it, it's, um, it's there in Philadelphia. It's, it's right on the river. And uh, it was very instrumental during, during the Revolutionary War um, and because George Washington, in order to, to get his men across the Delaware, asked a small contingent of soldiers to, to hold that fort and to hold to the extremity against the, the British. And so these, these men held off the British bombardment um, from their ships so George Washington could get his army across the over to the Delaware. And so there's a lot of history throughout the fort. And when we first went in there, we, again, we set up night vision video cameras and voice recorders in all areas of the fort. And they have what are called casemates, and they're essentially these underground um, uh, bunkers, if you will, that are, are the, the sound is, is, is it's almost impenetrable with sound because it's covered with dirt, um, impenetrable from light. And um, so, we, again, we had up these voice recorders and, and, and night vision video cameras there, and uh, we caught some fascinating things. It was our first investigation where we actually caught a shadow figure on one of our, our stationary night vision cameras. So to us, that was very cool. Um, it was in an area that we could absolutely guarantee that nobody was there. And because the, the night vision video camera was stationary in the doorway of this casemate, so nobody, you could see that nobody was in the casemate, and then all of a sudden the shadow figure crosses a laser grid that we had set up there. Um, we caught voices such as children laughing. We caught um, voices... Uh, it, it, mostly that night was in response to us. So, for example, in one of the casemates, we asked, what year is it for you? And a male voice came over and said, 74. Wow. Uh, so that was fascinating. Um, in, in another one of the casemates where during the Civil War, they held Union and Confederate troops, I asked the question, who is your president? And a male voice came over the voice recorder and said, Lincoln which to us is very telling. Um, we, uh, we had voices interacting with us. Um, uh, in, in one of the casemates, we had left a cigarette and some water, uh, and we do that as what we call trigger items. So we left that there, and I had asked uh, during one of our sessions there, I said, uh, you know, we left you a cigarette and we left you some water. And a male voice behind me says, thank you which to us is very intelligent, and it's a sign that, uh, you know, the, the entity was actually interacting with us, which was kind of cool. So, yeah, Fort Mifflin to us was, it was probably, um, in, in my mind, the area that had some of the best activity that we've caught on an investigation so far. That sounds amazing, too. I'll talk more about your favorite places, the best stories, and more. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here at Christy Sumner from SoulSistersParanormal.com here on the Mike Wagner Show. We talked about a couple of places they've been in, how they got interested in the paranormal, and how they started forming the show as well, too. And um, you, we also had a list of um, some of the places you've been. And what were some of your pl- favorite places for uh, paranormal activity of all the places you've been at? What's been your favorite? Well, it, it's, it's interesting because we have been to so many historic places. I mean, not many people can say that they've stayed the night in a lighthouse or an insane asylum or jails or prisons or a revolutionary war fort. So it, it's, that's an interesting question when you say your favorite. 
Um, the one that had the most activity in my mind would be the old Gilcrest County Jail in Trenton, Florida. And this investigation was, was very cool because it, uh, again, uh, we had partnered with Ghost Biker Explorations and, um, Miranda Young is the investigator who was on that show. And so it was actually just she and I. So, um, we were the only two females, we were the only two people in this location. And, um, this is a jail that was built in 1928 and then operated until 1968. And it's a small county jail. It has eight cells. It's two stories. But it had a very violent past, and um, so we had some of the stories beforehand when we went there. Um, again, just she and I, and it's in a location that is not the best part of the county. So when uh, when we go on some of these investigations, you know, we have handguns. We are licensed to carry. So she and I both had our handguns going into this location, and it was cool because when we first started out, we weren't getting a lot of activity, uh, paranormal activity. And so we decided to take our guns off and kind of set them down, just kind of in a show of, you know, we're not law enforcement. And as soon as we set the, the weapons down, Miranda said, okay, we're setting our weapons down. We're not law enforcement. And immediately we got a, a male voice saying the word good. And we caught that on voice recorder, which is kind of cool. And then after that, the activity that night was just really off the charts. We, um, all of our equipment had some type of, of hit or, um, an entity that we feel was interacting with that equipment. And to us, it really validated the fact that it, there were some paranormal entities that wanted to communicate with us. So we caught uh, um, voices, like I said, on the voice recorder. Um, for example, we had left a, a stationary night or a stationary voice recorder in a location where uh, a guy was actually killed. And um, when we had actually stepped outside to take a break, during that time, the voice recorder got a male voice saying, please come help me. And another voice recorder at the same time in the upstairs cell said, kill him, which was kind of interesting to us. Um, several pieces of equipment, like I said, were, were going off in response to some of the questions that we were asking, which to us was very telling. We caught shadow figures. We actually saw shadow figures. And to us, to me, actually, that was probably, with regard to paranormal activity, our best location. Um, probably the location that is the most near and dear to my heart would be the Ma Barker house in Ocklawaha, Florida. And that's the site of the 1935 shootout between the Barker gang and the FBI. And, um, and, and just a brief history on that house, it was a house that um, the gang member Ma Barker and her son Freddie rented in, uh, in, the late, in, in late 1934 and uh, they were wanted by the FBI, by J. Edgar Hoover, and they had rented that house as kind of like a hideaway to get away from the heat of the FBI. And then in 1935, the FBI tracked them down there to that house. A gun battle ensued, which to this date is still the longest gun battle in FBI history. And Ma and her son were killed by the FBI in that house. And it's, it's, it's a, a near and dear to my heart because so far the Soul Sisters Paranormal has been the only team that has been allowed to go in there and investigate. And we caught some fascinating evidence. Um, we set up some night vision cameras and some voice recorders that we left running on the night of the anniversary of the shootout. And it encompassed the time when the shootout would have happened 83 years prior. And we got names um, such as Ma and Freddie on our voice recorder. We had the sounds of chairs being moved. And this is when nobody was in the house. We just left it run overnight. And then we left and came back the next morning. And so we had th that night we had chairs being scraped. We had the sound of knocks and bangs and voices and footsteps. And to us, that is just the neatest, um, one of the neatest investigations, again, because um, it's just a place that is very cool to us. It's in our hometown. Um, we've heard stories about it growing up. And to be able to investigate it makes it probably one of the investigations that I'm most proud of. And, and what is the most unusual um paranormal you've been on with like the most unusual history something that has never been reported whatsoever of course you had the ma barker shootings and you had some mm -hmm. famous stories tied to the uh paranormal visits you have but what about the one that is like the most underrated or the most undiscovered or that's like you know that's historic but it's never been reported which one was like the rarest that you have discovered uh, probably the mob Barker would have to go um, to the top of that list. Uh, I think also the old Gilcrest County Jail. 
uh, you know, it, it's in a location. It's it's about I'd say about 45 minutes west of Gainesville, Florida, and it's it is in a, a small county, a small population. And yeah, they've had investigators there before, but it's not one of these that is you know large um, with regard to either location or with a, a paranormal following, if you will. It's certainly not a Moundsville Penitentiary or a, a Trans Allegheny lunatic asylum um, with regard to scope or, or um, an audience base in the paranormal. So I think Gilcrest County Jail is probably the little hidden gem just because it's such a small structure in a small county, but it's huge with paranormal activity. So and, I, I'd say that one is the most interesting to us. And, of course, you also been to the West Virginia State Penitentiary twice, and uh, tell us about that, and uh, why did you return? Well, like I said, that was our first investigation. So we went in uh, kind of blind, if you will, for that investigation, our very first one. And we had, like I said, some digital cameras, a couple voice recorders, uh, just two night vision video cameras. And the activity that we caught there that first night, that first investigation, really solidified in our minds that we wanted to continue with paranormal act- or paranormal investigations, as well as the, the the want and the need to research this further. So we we went back um, uh, uh, the next year after we had done a couple more investigations. So uh, when we returned, we were armed with better equipment. We were armed with uh, a greater history base with regard to um, the history of the prison. And it's kind of neat to us because, again, my two sisters and I are on this team, and our grandpa used to be a prison guard at Moundsville before he became the chief of police of Glendale, West Virginia. So he was there for a couple of years. So that, there's a really a neat uh, familial tie as well to Moundsville for us. And um, that second investigation that we did, again, we were armed with better equipment, and we were just catching things um, uh, that we didn't expect but that was very germane to the location. So, for example, um, there is a a cell there where a prisoner by the name of Red Snyder was housed, and he was a murderer. Um, He murdered uh, several people before he was captured and and stuck in in Moundsville. And um, it was known that during the day he would like to watch uh, Days of Our Lives. They would wheel a TV in front of his cell, and he liked to smoke cigarettes. So based on that research, we set up, again, what we call trigger items. So we had actually downloaded a a couple episodes of Days of Our Lives. We put it on my laptop. We let it run by itself for a couple hours. And then we went back and talked about the fact that we'd left it for him. And we had some really cool experiences based on that. We, um, you know, I I asked him if he had seen it, and and we had a male voice saying, yes, thank you. And we have a couple of meters, and they're called K2 meters. And basically what they do is they measure electronic energy in the surrounding location. And there's no power in this location, So, and we were not wearing any devices at the time that would have any type of electromagnetic field or energy field on us. Um, so when these meters go off, it's very hard for us to explain what's causing that other than paranormal. That is... Um, a- so Go, go that- ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no. So we had those meters going off um, in response to the questions that we were asking. So to us, that was very a, a very cool investigation for sure. It, it sounds like it really is. And what are your upcoming plans for um, for 2020? And what places are you going to visit next for paranormal? Well, we just came off a really cool investigation last weekend. Uh, we were in Mississippi, and we had the opportunity to do um, an old funeral home as well as another old jail in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, and that was fantastic. Um, we're, we're going through the evidence review on that right now and, and hoping to, to drop those videos hopefully in the next couple of months because it does take some time for us to get those videos out there. Um, and, and we're doing a couple of paracons um, or paranormal conventions we're going out to Las, uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, that's supposed to be in September. And we have a couple other investigations lined up. Um, we've already had one that's kind of been altered the date um, because of this uh, the, the pandemic that's going around. So that's kind of taken a hit a little bit as well. So once everything's back up and running and we're after, you know, done with this, this pandemic, um, we're going to hit it hard with a couple other locations um, that uh, we'll be releasing those those locations here soon. Mm-hmm. And any plans for uh, for a TV shows or a TV series or web series? And I know you have a lot of videos on your YouTube. Any plans for a TV show or web series? 
Um, well, like you said, we do have uh, our channel, uh, Soul Sisters Paranormal, on uh, on YouTube. We have been approached by a couple of uh, producers, and you know, we hope to have some exciting announcements. Um, maybe the end of this year, first of next year. Um, you know, it'd be it'd be very cool to us to get on a TV show for sure. Um, but to us, that's not really the driving factor. Um, you know, the historical aspect and highlighting these places that maybe the general public doesn't know or doesn't know the historical significance behind them. That's really our driving factor with all of this. Um, and then for us, the paranormal does come secondary. So like, for example, if we were to go to a location and we weren't finding any paranormal activity, we would still put an episode out there just based on the historical um, significance of the location, because our hope is to really help these locations get some publicity and maybe get some revenue for preservation. So that's our main goal. But to answer your question in a, in a long-winded way, um, there may be something in the future with regard to a television show. Sounds great. And keep us up to date. We'd love to have you back on sometime later in 2020 or next year or so. And, um, of course, we talk about some of the defining moments you had, your best moments. How about, how about some of your funniest moments you had in the paranormal? <laughs> well, um, we've had some really interesting, um, with regard to just activity, um, we've had some interesting things with children, um, which is, is kind of different because when you go to some of these locations, you don't really expect, um, unless there's a story or a historical significance behind it, you don't really expect children. Um, but we were at the Exchange Hotel in Gordonsville, Virginia, and there was reports of a young, uh, young child uh, spirit there uh, named Jeremy. And myself and another team member, we were sitting in the hallway, and we had a little glow-in-the-dark bowl. And uh, so we were sitting across from each other, probably about seven or eight feet from each other, and we were rolling this ball back and forth, and it, the, the, our meters would light up based on that. And, and that was pretty cool to us. I think that was a lot of fun. Um, and we do try to keep it lighthearted. Yeah, it's obviously a serious subject matter when you're talking about the paranormal, but we do try to keep it lighthearted. Um, you know, we... Uh, we're all very close, so we do joke around with each other and stuff. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that, like probably dealing with children, um, you kind of got to have to get in that childlike mindset. I mean, kind of play with them. Um, we have blow-in-the-dark balloons and stuff that uh, that will blow up and different trigger items for kids. So uh, that, that's, that's probably where the fun aspect of it comes in, for sure. It, it sounds like it, too. And who do you consider biggest influence in your careers? Biggest influence? Um, well, with regard to this community, the paranormal community, even though we are a subculture, um, there are a lot of people out there that are trying to bring this more into the mainstream, which I, I really appreciate because there are some aspects of paranormal activity that, that the mainstream, um, you know, or what we call norm in society can learn from. So one of the, uh, one of the investigators that we really followed uh, in early on in our um, investigations was Miranda Young from Ghost Biker Explorations, and she really kind of influenced some of the uh, investigation styles that we kind of have, have adopted or, you know, have kind of morphed into a little bit. Um, we've been fortunate enough to collaborate with her on several investigations. Um, you know, there, there are obviously uh, taps um, from, from ghost hunters. You know, they kind of set the bar with regard to paranormal investigations. Um, so following some of their techniques, but then also kind of expounding on our own. Um, again, we all have advanced degrees, so we try to bring that research base into it, um, probably a little bit more so than uh, other teams, not to disparage other teams, but you know, obviously we try to bring that historical aspect into it. So, um, you know, I, there are several um, teams out there that we do follow and that we would love to collaborate with. But, uh, you know, I think we do bring our unique style because we are an all-female team, um, which is kind of unique in this community as well. And um, so we do try to bring our unique aspect into it. But there are several several that we do follow. That's great, too. And uh, also looking forward to what you have as well, too. And what's the best advice you give, you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, if, you're, if you're going to be a paranormal investigator, um, be prepared to spend a lot of money on batteries and different equipment because it does kind of, it kind of sucks you in. Um, and then also just have patience. Um, you know, a lot of, because of the sensationalism, I would say, of the TV shows, you know, people think that a paranormal investigation is you go in, you investigate, you find some evidence, and you're done in 60 minutes. That's not how it works. I mean, some of these locations, we're spending 12, 14 hours in the locations and we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got multiple cameras running. We've got multiple voice recorders running. 
And when you're done with that, you have to go and analyze all of that. So when we've got 10 voice recorders writing for 10 hours, I'm actually sitting and listening to all of that audio and I'm watching all of that video. So there is a lot of patience. It's not, you know, um, we don't do an investigation on a Saturday and then drop a video on a Monday. It usually takes us a couple of months to get um, all of our evidence reviewed and then get that onto a video. So I would say patience um, and then just having an open mind. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of skeptics and a lot of people who really don't believe in what we do, and that's fine. For us, we're not trying to convince anybody. What we're doing is putting out evidence that we feel is compelling, um, that I can tell you I can't explain uh, or I can't debunk. So, um, but that's not to say I'm forcing anybody to believe in what I believe or to agree with what I'm doing. Um, basically, like I said, I'm just putting it out there. We're putting it out there um, just as a compelling discussion, if you will. Um, and that, that's kind of what I, I would give to an up-and-coming paranormal investigator. You know, you have to be able to, to take criticism and you have to be able to really defend your point if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's amazing too, Christy. Once again, Christy Sumner from SoulSistersParanormal.com here on the Mike Wagner Show. A big thank you for your time, Christy. Looking forward to having you again soon. And before we go here, we'd love to have it back on sometime later in the year. What, what are your upcoming projects, your website, how do people contact you, and where can people watch your videos? Okay, you can visit us on uh, our website at www.soulsistersparanormal.com. We also are very active on Facebook, um, just getting into the Instagram scene. But on Facebook, it's Soul Sisters Paranormal. And then on YouTube, it's Soul Sisters Paranormal. That's the name of our channel. And as I said before, we do have a couple of investigations coming up as well as some uh, conferences and um, uh, some speeches that we're going to be attending. Uh, all of that information is on our website, and we do welcome feedback, and we do welcome um, any uh, suggestions for investigations. You can contact us um, via our, uh, our, our website. We have a, a contact form there, so feel free to fill that out. We love to hear from people, and uh, we just really appreciate the support that we've gotten um, over the last couple of years from from people who've been following us and uh, really encouraging us in what we do. That sounds fantastic. Once again, Christy Sumner from SoulSisterParanormal.com. Big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you. Have you back in 2020. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.